This is John T for the Boxing Voice, and I'm joined this evening by English middleweight contender Marcus Morrison. How you doing, Marcus? I'm good, mate. I'm well, thank you. You? I'm really good. Thanks for coming on the site. Well, how's today look for you? Have you been training? Yeah, I've been in this morning. I had a tough session, um, and I'll be I'll be back out on the road shortly. Excellent. Go for a run this evening, yeah? Yeah, mate. Good stuff. Busy, well, look, you're up now to 23 wins, just to three defeats. You won last time out, which was another good win for you. That was against Daryl Sharp. I think it was the second time you fought him. How was that fight for you? Yeah, it was um, It was a bit of a last-minute one, really. Um, we was looking for opponents, and at the time, it was... It was a it was a tough ask to 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 get an opponent and yeah Daryl stepped in and at the time it was it was a January it was January last year so you know I thought I'd get off to a, a good start of the year and have a busy as a bit I'd have a busy 2020 it would have been but yeah it was it was my only fight of the year and yeah it's been it's been over a year now that since I've, since I've been out of the ring. Yeah, it's a frustrating few like many where you haven't got. I suppose at least you did get that fight in January because a lot of fighters hadn't fought maybe for four or five months before the pandemic. Yeah, exactly. Then it ended up being 18 months. So it's only really just been over a year for you. And you're on a good run. You know, you, you, the three defeats you had, looking at your record, they were four or five years ago now. So you, you, you've won quite a few on, on the bounce. Um, a couple of fights before that, you went to Italy. That must have been a great experience because you won your first title over there, the WBC International Silver title. What was that like? Yeah, it was a, uh, well, I'd actually held that title um, a couple of years before. But yeah, going out, out to Italy to Rome, it was a, a great experience. And then, um, yeah, obviously, sweeter to come home with a win. Excellent stuff. And now you've got your big chance. So um, announced, I think it was last week, was it? The uh, big Chisora Parker pay-per-view card. Um, you're going to be fighting Chris Eubank Jr. Um, excited? Yeah, absolutely buzzing. Massive fight for me. Um, can't wait now. What are, what are you expecting from Chris? If you don't mind me saying on paper, it looks like a step up in class for you. Well deserved because, as I said, you're on that run. But what are you expecting from him? Yeah, it's a it's a massive step up for me. Uh, like you said on paper, um, you know, a lot of people say I'll, I'll be out of my depth, but I really, honestly, don't believe so. And I just think the fans on May the first are in for a treat. I think it's going to be an explosive fight, and you know, in that that type of fight, two explosive fighters, um, anything can happen. Must be frustrating for you getting on such a big card like that, not being able to have the fans in there because it's definitely the biggest event you've been on. Yeah, it'd be nice, uh, you know, to put a show on in front of in front of the fans in, you know, in a big arena. But listen, you know, it is what it is. Everyone's in the same boat and yeah, we've got to, we've got to crack on. Do you think that um, Chris might overlook you? Do you think he's expecting to just win this easy because it's a step up for you? Um, it's, it's possible. It's very possible. But, you know, from my experience, um, I'd say no, because you, you can't do that. You can't afford to do that in boxing, um, especially with, with a fighter who's as dangerous as I am. Um, you know, it, listen, it'd be a fool to do that. And, you know, if he does, you know, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, listen, I, 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 I rate Eubanks work ethic and he, you know, he, I always see him training hard and he seems the type that stays dedicated. So, you know, I think, I think he is a true professional that, you know, stays, stays in the gym all year round and stays fit. So if, if, if you to ask me, you know, if he is, I'd, I'd probably say no, I'd probably say he's yeah, I tend to agree with you. I, and certainly what you said about the athlete, he's got a great engine. He does look like he looks after himself. I think for the last year, like yourself, it's been frustrating for him. He's not been out, but he's been over in, I think he's been in Florida pretty much most of the year and he's being trained by Roy Jones Jr. Now, what do you make of that? Do you think that will only help him more because he's got a set trainer? I think um, Chris Ewan Jr. has always been a very good fighter. And if he's ever had to improve on any part of his game, it's been his his boxing ability, um, which is where he's come up short on a couple of occasions against very good boxers. So I think that's the reason for the move, possibly because you know Roy Jones is one of the best to ever do it. Uh, great boxer, and I think you know that's that's a, probably the reason why he, he's made that move and to try and brush up on his on his uh, his boxing skills. Uh, in ter- when I say boxing skills, I mean. Um, in terms of you know 
at range. Um, he's a very, very good fighter up close and uh, sharp to mid range. Uh, but you know, I think he, he's looking to improve his his, his long game. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what tweaks or adjustments Roy's brought to the camp because, as I mentioned, he hasn't always had a set trainer and bringing in someone where it's stabilised with that experience. And I'm sure Roy will look at things and think what he can do different. So it'll be interesting to see. It must also be great for you uh, being on that card where there's some world title fights. So Katie Taylor, she's like a household name now. She's out defending her belts. And then there's the Bivol v Craig Richards fight. What do you think of those fights? Yeah, uh, look, Bivol's very, very talented fighter. Um, and I'm I'm looking forward to seeing seeing him up close um, and watching that fight. Um, you know I think he's a he's an exceptional talent, and as well as Katie Taylor, great fighter, um, all the belts. So uh, it's gonna be a great fight. But Katie that night, um, he's up against um, my gym mate Tasha, um, and Tasha's flying at the minute and. I can see an upset on the cards there as well. Yeah, I forgot you were in the same gym, actually. So Joe's going to be busy uh, come fight yeah. that night. He'll have a busy night, yeah. Yeah, I see you've been sparring, obviously, same gym as well. Uh, Callum Johnson, is that right? Yeah, Callum Johnson. Um, he's a light heavyweight in a, in our gym. So he's he's helping me out, uh, doing very well to replicate, you know, some of the things Chris Eubank, Chris Eubank does. Uh does well, so yeah, it's just you know trying to get to grips with with the, the style of fighting and yeah, um, Callum's doing that very well. He's good sparring for you. Certainly, being a couple of weights bigger than you, it certainly helps you take power. That come fight night, that will that will definitely hold you in good stead. The whole bubble experience will be quite new for you. I spoke to a lot of fighters that have actually been out two, three, four times, even some. Um, you'll be there for a few days with them because I think it's at the beginning of May. So the hospitality sector wouldn't have opened. So I imagine the plan is to still go in a few days before. Is that right? Uh, I imagine so. Yeah. There's no. I've not. I've not uh, heard any difference. So um, I would imagine so. Yeah. So. Um, like I said, it's the first time I've been in the uh, matching bubble. Um, and yeah, it'll be an experience. Yeah, great. Not one that I'm used to, but yeah, listen, the end of the week we fight, so it is what it is. Fantastic, and take it with both hands, mate. A big night for you, and, and if you pull it off, it'll be fantastic. Your career just goes through the roof there, which would be really, really good. Oh, if you don't mind, just before I let you go, I'll talk about a couple of other fights that are around your weight. There's been some, a uh, couple of big domestic ones that have been set up. Firstly, you've got Felix Cash against Denzel Bentley for the British and Commonwealth. I know the fans are really looking forward to that. Who do you think will win that one? Yeah, very good fight. Um, Bentley done very well uh, picking up the British. He beat Mark Efron. Um, fair play to him. Um, Cash obviously got the Commonwealth. Very well schooled, good pedigree. Um, I think it'd be a great fight. Um, but for me, I'm going to go with a cash win. Another 50 50 fight. I think on paper, it's like flipping the coin. They've both got their strengths there. So we'll look forward to that one. And then also uh, a level up, admittedly. Liam Williams, for me, one of the uh, most improved fighters over the last few years, in my opinion. He's got his right, rightly, he's got his shot uh, for a world title against Demetrius Andrade. He's got to go over to America. I think that's around about the same time. What are your thoughts there? Do you think he's got a chance of bringing that belt back home? I think he's got more than a chance. I think um, Demetrius Andre, very, very good fighter, very skillful. Um, but listen, I rate Liam Williams highly. I think he's a, a great fighter, um, very strong and can box as well, uh, especially with teaming up with with uh, Dominic Ingle. I think he's, he's uh, improved his, his, uh, his game massively. And I just think I can see a, a Liam Williams stoppage. It's interesting. As I said, I do think he's sound proved that he will go looking for a tear up. He's a great boxer, like you said as well. And it'll be interesting to see how Andre is a great boxer, but you know, he'll be going for him and he'll just see 12 rounds of that. Uh, I think Liam's got a really good chance. And then the last one uh, is a uh, weight probably higher than you because you're at middle, but around about the similar weight, the super middle, the big clash for me so far that's been set up. So Billy Joe Saunders has got his shout uh, and his chance at Canelo on a massive card in Dallas. I think that's in May as well. I was expecting 60, 70,000 fans there. If anybody can beat Canelo, can it be Billy? As soon as I said, if anyone can beat, beat Canelo, it'd be a... Uh... It'd be Callum Smith, and I genuinely did think that um, Callum was the man to to do that. 
Um, but with that said, Billy Joe was a very, very good fighter and you know a great boxer. Um, and anyone who'll do well to beat Billy Joe for over the first six rounds. But I just see Canelo being too strong and uh, too good, to be honest. I just think Canelo, at the minute, is, I honestly believe he's unbeatable. And he'll do very, very, very well to to uh, to get the win. Mm. But listen, if I was to put money on it, it'd be a, it'd be a Canelo win. Yeah. Do you think his style might be... I'm not saying it definitely wins it for him, but it might just be the bit that's different for Canelo. Like Callum Smith, your gym mate, fantastic fighter, undefeated, world champion. I agreed with you. I, I was watching that thinking, no disrespect to Callum, I expected Canelo to win, but I thought he had a really good chance. But the manner and the performance of Canelo in that fight, making Callum look the way he did, I was just blown away by that. Uh, and that yeah. just makes me think that that's where I agree with you. He almost is unbeatable, but that slick southpaw stance, a lot of fainting and moving and dummying and that, that might confuse Canelo a little bit. Possibly, yeah. I do think um, it's a style that Canelo wouldn't have come across. Well, not that he wouldn't have come, off, come across before, but someone who uses that style as well as Billy Joe is very slick, you know, hard to hard to nail down and, you know, we'll, we'll move and move for, for the full 12 rounds. And like I said, you'll do well to to beat Canelo, um, beat Billy Joe over the first six rounds. But I just think the later rounds, the pressure, and you know Canelo's punch power is um, it's it's ridiculous. And I just listen. I just can't see can't see any style that that beats him. Yeah, I do think Billy Joe might give him problems early on, uh, trying to pin Billy Joe down. But I do think as the rounds go on, I think he'll start to get to him. I'll tell you what, uh, not surprised, well, maybe it did surprise me, but when he fought um, Callum, it was his defence as well. I was like, I hadn't seen how good defensively he was because Callum was arguably one of the best he's ever fought. Um, but he just looked defensively supreme as well as the power on coming forward. As you said, almost unbeatable. Yeah, exactly. It's uh, I wouldn't say Billy Joe's the biggest puncher. He can certainly punch, but I don't think it's the biggest puncher. Um, but yeah, when you looked at even the fight with Callum, even to even when you land on Canelo, it's very hard to land clean. He's forever riding shots and taking a sting out of shots. Um, so and you know he makes you miss like he makes you he makes you look silly. Um, you know his, his head movements unbelievable, catching shots and like I said, even when you do land, you, it's, it's hard to land clean. Um, it's just in my eyes, you're around, you're all around perfect fighter. You can punch. Your defense is great. Uh, great engine. You know, he's like I said, I I can't see him being beaten anytime soon. You know, I think the only thing that does beat him is his size, but I don't think that's that super middle. Mm. Fair enough. Well, look, Marcus, thanks so much for taking time out to chat to us. Really excited and looking forward for your fight, as I'm sure you are. We'll be watching with anticipation and maybe we'll pick up with you around fight week and get you in um, when you're in the bubble. If that's all right with you. Perfect, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers, bud. All the best. Right, man. Thanks a lot. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the Patreon dot com backslash the boxing voice we have tons of exclusive from border wars and title betting shows the list goes on and on and on but in addition to that if you guys have questions for fighters trainers and promoters this is where you can submit them we will run out get these questions answered and put it back on the show just for you guys appreciate it peace